All right, and we're back. We're gonna be doing Palace Midas. Probably one of the better Tomb, Tomb Raider 1 levels, in my opinion. It's not easy, but it's not hard at the same time. I think it's it's the right blend of an A-linear challenge that you can solve in any way. So there's a lot of ways you can go about doing this level, which I actually really enjoy. Um, first things first, I'm gonna clear out all the bullshit because I don't want to deal with these fucking monkeys while I'm trying to do this level. It's actually a pretty long level. I'd say it's the longest um, level in this level set. I guess. I think Cistern is actually pretty short. <gasps> that was where my dad, when he played this game originally, he couldn't get past it because he said it was too hard and he got confused. Um, Cistern, in my opinion, is actually pretty easy. I don't think it's as bad as it looks at first because it's a very intimidating level. Like, there's a lot of shit to it. It looks really sprawling, but it's it's actually pretty condensed, and there's only, like, two parts of it, actually, so it's not, like, just super crazy. Um, but the whole point of this level is we're going to have to get four lead bars. Um, the lead bars have to be turned into gold, um, and you need to turn them into gold by using Midas's hand, which, if you're unfamiliar with Legends, Midas was a emperor that was cursed to... I, I can't remember the entirety of everything about it, because there's so many different versions of it I've read. But the, the general consensus is he was an asshole and greedy, and everything he touched turned to gold, and he touched himself at night, and he became frozen with fucking gold. So that kind of sucks. You don't really want that. Um, so, But when I was a kid, I was like, I know what that is. That's really cool. So I don't know. I don't know why I'm getting so many sound issues. It's not the headphones either. This is just the way the audio mixing in this game works. Oh! I love the <laughs> I love the monkeys so much. They make such cool sounds. Ooh, ooh, ooh. They just make me smile cuz they scared the shit out of me as a kid. I haven't even told this before, but I used to when I was a child, I I was fucking traumatized uh by Sasquatch. Like it that shit scared me so bad. It still scares me. Um but shit, dude, when I was a kid, it was like I had just nightmares of shit like that. This game didn't help either, so... Oh, man. I never got this far as a kid. I think I didn't get to this point until I was a teenager, at least. So... Also, this alligator is just annoying as hell. He doesn't really do anything, so just get rid of him. I don't know why you'd ever honestly want to keep enemies alive in Tomb Raider. I, I think you're an insane human being to want to do that. More power to you if that's what you want to do, though. I gotta get my bearings here, because... Uh, this level is pretty massive, and there's a lot of busy work I'm going to clean up first. Because, trust me, I just want to make sure this level goes as smooth as I can possibly make it. There's a lion in here. No, it's in the next area. He's There's a monkey over here. I'm pretty certain. Oh, yep. Mm, I hear you. I know you're there. I just can't see you, bud. Come on. Get out of your hidey hole. I'll make you go out. Yep, there he is. Like, shit like this would just give me a heart attack as a kid. You have no idea how scary this shit was. <laughs> Ugh. So, anyways. Like I said, this level can be tackled in a lot of ways. There is a set way to do it. You can solve all the puzzles first. You can get all the bars first. You can do whatever you want. It's a very... I don't know. I like this kind of game design a lot. Because if you've ever played in my Doom levels, you'll know I am actually very fond of letting the player solve for X when you want to, basically. There we go. There's lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. You know, it was kind of a shame they didn't have tigers in this game because there's lions, tigers, and bears. And they could have, honest to God, capitalized on that for a selling point. But they didn't introduce tigers till Tomb Raider 2, which is kind of a damn shame, honestly. I don't know, man. I, I prefer fucking, like tigers over fucking lions any days it looked cooler when i was a kid i used to pretend my cat was a tiger and he'd go rawr because i'm eternally five years old so cool also the ps1 version this area is fucking really dark i remember missing this med kit the first time i hope i'm remembering that correctly or i was just really stupid probably a little bit of both i don't know there's so many instances of this game is just burned into my childhood like God, that fucking bear screaming at you, like, in the first level, and the mummy and the dinosaurs. Like, there's so much shit in this game that has just so stuck with me over the years. 
I wouldn't say Tomb Raider 1 is my favorite, like, PS1 game, but it's the most nostalgic to me, I guess, so that's why I have a lot of... Oh, it's someone having a tiny penis outside. Um, yeah. Anyways, it's not my favorite PS1 game, but it's high up there. I mean, actually, if I had to pick my favorite PS1 game, that's not a main, like, the big boys, you know, like Metal Gear Solid, Tomb Raider or Ape Escape, or whatever. Like, you know, your Sony exclusives, like your Resident Evil and everything. I probably have to say it was a very... It was like a Gundam-style shooter. It was called, um, a Mega Boost. It's fucking awesome, dude. That game had the most badass soundtrack ever. It was, like, early, like, trance techno with, like, Japanese speed influence. It was fucking cool. And it was, like... Oh, you, you were, like, a... Gundam style mech and you shot dudes in space and it was like an on rail shooter. It was so so cool. I Oh god, I wish I could I, I don't emulate games. So if you're like, oh just emulate it, I'm like, no, you don't understand. That's not the same. I'm sure this game is not that good. Uh but when I was a kid, my cousin like I was at his house and keep in mind I never like really keep in contact with this side of my family. But, uh, when I was a kid, because he lived in, like, Portland, and, um, I never really went there because it was, like, a family-only reason to go, you know? So, when I went there, he had this copy of a Mega Boost. He's like, oh, this game's really cool. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And so, we slammed that fucker in, and it was the coolest shit to me as a kid. It's still really cool. And, like, he'd see the enemies. He's, I think, two years older than me, so I was like, oh, he's, he's ancient. He's, like, an adult, basically. And, um... He's like, oh, it's the boss. And I was like, oh, what the hell is that? Like, it was so cool. Like, oh, man. That game was awesome. It still is. Like, I can't really describe the gameplay very well because it's kind of a hybrid of, like I said, it's like a mech shooter, but it's also like an on rail shooter, but not really at the same time. Like, you have, like, this full 3D axis you're moving around on. But everything is, like, playing out in front of you. Like, enemies... It's kind of like a shoot 'em up as well. So it's like a hybrid of, like, three or so different types of games. But it is so fucking cool, dude. I... If you've never seen it, um... Look up Omega Boost soundtrack. Like, the main theme. It's just this really basic sounding, like... I guess it sounds new metal-y. I'm not really sure. Maybe that's why I have, like, a hard-on for it, because I absolutely love new metal. But, um, like... Dude, that game was fucking awesome. Like, I can't... Oh, fucking shit. Ah, oh, I, I... I nudged. That's what I did. That's the whole problem. I just did... I nudged. That was my fault. Oh, well. It gives me more time to talk about a Mega Boost while I'm on the way there. Um, but anyways... I don't even think the story has like, any point. You're supposed to be, like, this Gundam-style mech thing with a dude inside of it, and you're shooting off, like, some dude that holds a fucking light light bulb, like, a hard-on, and then it's weird. It uses, like, those really old PS1 FMV, um, like, live-action sequences in the beginning. And when I saw that shit, it was so cool, because, I don't know, like, early PS1, you gotta understand, was, like, a fucking gold mine. Like, for anybody in that age, because there was so many games, but when you're a kid, you're only, you only have your games, you know? But when you have someone that's like, oh, check this shit out, and it's like fucking Metal Gear Solid or something, you're like, oh my god, that is the coolest shit ever. Like, it is so different. I swear to god there's a monkey down here, right? No? I guess he spawns later after one of the switches, but we're gonna open this area up first. Because I want to get this part done and then do the next part after it. So, I don't know. It was like my experience with a, a shmup kind of game, I guess. And it was really cool. I mean, the gameplay was actually pretty solid. Like, you had a fuck you attack, basically, that just... Oh, it's called the Viper Boost. I remember what it's called. It says, Viper Boost Ready. It, oh, sorry. Viper Boost Ready. It's like this really weird, like, synthetic robot voice. And it's like, warning... Warning! Enemy unit approaching! And then the soundtrack would go... Hey, hey! It's like... That game got you so fucking hype. 
Like, you fought, like, giant, like, aircraft cruisers and shit, and, like, you were underneath it shooting the bombs as they fucking fell on you. That game was awesome, dude. Like, I'm getting a, a half-chub just thinking about it. It was awesome. Like, I can't... I can't tell you how cool this game was. And you're probably wondering, what what's the what's the catch here? What's the... What's the... Oh, hi. What's the, um... Drawback to this story, Seth? Well, okay. So... Like I said, my cousin owned the game. I didn't actually own it. So I remember one Thanksgiving, I said, Hey, can I have Omega Boost? Because... I, I don't know. I just wanted it. <laughs> I didn't think of asking my parents to buy it because it was rated T. And, I mean, it wasn't violent, I guess, in terms of, like, graphic. But it's just, like, it was a T-rated game. I was, like, nine or something like that. So my parents were obviously not going to buy it. Anyways, this is where Midas' statue is as well. Um, we're going to need to come back here later. I just want to show you guys this area first. That way you can get an idea for the map. But, um... Okay, so I... I I fucking asked him, like, that Thanksgiving before, hey, can I have Omega Boost? And he's like, oh, sure, I don't want it anymore. And so he came over the next year, because this is, like, way before Facebook, and he gave me Omega Boost. And the problem is, it had a bunch of scratches on it. And anybody who's ever owned a PS1 game understands very easily what scratching does to games, and PS1 games especially are very susceptible to crashing on certain things. And, god damn it, dude, I... I shit you not, this is like the most ass-clenched story possible. I would pray, fingers crossed, that the damn area wouldn't glitch out. And I, I actually got to the last level of this game one time before the disc just started to fucking fail. And it was so cool, man, you have no idea. I've never beat that game. And I, I know what it looks like. I've actually seen the ending. So, anyways. This is the next puzzle of this area. It's actually pretty basic. Um, we have these Omega symbols and whatever the fuck symbols. So, I'm just going to remember my mnemonic for this is YO. So, <laughs> um, anyways. Yeah, dude. I uh, That game was so fucking cool. Like, and your main weapon was like a gun that went it was really bassy that's why it was so cool it made this really cool like just it was like a triple shot burst but you could smash the button as fast as you could and it would actually like just do that it was so cool so you could like it was so neat and like it rewarded you for that because it would do more damage to the enemies because you'd be hitting them more often Oh, and you had, like, missiles that you locked on, and you shot, and you dodged in the air, and, like, it was so fucking cool, dude. I... Oh, God. You have no idea. That game was fucking awesome. Okay, so this is a bit of a tough one. There's a couple of ways you can do this puzzle. One of them is cheesing it. Uh, the other is tanking. And I'm gonna try this in one go here. Oh, I don't think I did it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, fuck. It's really tight. Um, if this is Tomb Raider 2, I could actually do this in, like, without thinking, because this is one of the few very, very tight platforming challenges in the game. Also, for some reason, the rat enemies from the cistern are right here? Which is odd. Like, they... you can just kill them. I don't know why you'd want to leave them alone. They're just... they're not very damaging. The rats are actually very non-threatening in this game. Um, but, oh shit, dude, I... All right, so if you cross this line, it basically just starts this timer, so I think I fucked it up. Oh, God damn it, it's like you have to be on the half block at the perfect time and hit the button, like... If I had to complain about anything in Tomb Raider 1, it's this damn room. This was expanded on way better in Anniversary because it's not nearly as fucking jank. Ugh. If I had to complain, like I said, anything in this game is better than this. I'm actually gonna save fucking little arch vial flames. Um, okay. Let's try and do it the crack way. Uh? Uh? I'm gonna get lit on fire. I can feel it. Oh, shit! Wow! Normally I get lit on fire. That's a really dangerous part. So when you get lit on fire, 
you want to grab the lead bar and just say fuck it and deuce out of here. It's really not worth your time. Um, but yeah, you can fuck that up and get burned. The fire is not an instant kill, it's just damage over time. Uh, I think it will go out if you tank it long enough, but I don't really think there's very many instances in Tomb Raider 1 where you can get lit on fire, so please don't do it. Okay, so this one is... what did I say? It was Yoi! Uh, this one is... Well, we'll do that one later. The other one that's in front of me, so if I was facing right here, that's actually the exit of the area, so we want to do this one next. Oi, oi. I'm just gonna remember. That's my mnemonic, okay? Oi, oi. <laughs> I like that. Oi, oi. Don't judge me. I, I don't know, man. I have a really bad short-term memory. It's because of stress. I actually have CPTSD, so anything like small-term like that is just very difficult to remember. I think on the PS1 version, you can't actually even see that far out there. Okay, so it's oi oi. Alright, let's flip this bastard up. I don't know if that's a, like, secret over there, and I don't care. Um, so please don't be like, oh, you're missing secrets! I, I'm fully aware that I'm missing secrets here and there. Dude, when I was a kid, by the way, I actually, like, wrote this entire puzzle out. <laughs> like, on a piece of paper, because it was that hard for me to remember. But I was like five. Okay, I wasn't five when I got here. I was like ten, I think, at least. Yep, I knew it. I was like, a fucking gorilla spawns in here after a while. These things do so much damage. I, I'm i not overhyping this, I hope. Uh, okay, so this room is actually pretty easy. You know, because I said that and I fucked up on the last level, I'm just going to be safe. Um, but this really is not that bad. I don't think this is a very hard puzzle. So, this one, I will say, in the Anniversary Remake, is actually pretty solid. I'm not gonna, you know, sniff at it and go, Ugh, of course it's better, Ugh, Ugh, but it, it really is. Um, I think the grapple in that game really does amplify the control. It just, it's, it's something small, it's just an extra contextual cue, but... I want to know how they got that noise. It sounds like when you, like fucking mess up your blinds or something. Ugh. Oh, I don't like that. But, ugh. More Omega Boost, man. Dude, I... There's a boss in that game that has the coolest soundtrack in the entire game. It's essentially this just giant, like, space worm. But, uh... And I have a massive hard-on for, like, stuff like this. But... Well, not really. That's not my fetish, unfortunately. Sorry to ruin your dreams. I don't fantasize sexually about giant space worms. But, no, dude. It, it's got, like, the coolest fucking soundtrack ever. It's, like... It plays this, like, reversed... Uh, I think it's a centaur? Or, sorry, sitar, like, track. It's, like... But it's, like, really faint. And then it has, like, this, like, bass and drum. So it's, like... And then, like, dude, it's so fucking cool. You, you have no idea how cool this is. Like, you can find the soundtrack to this game online. It's just... Oh, man, you don't understand. When I was a kid, I'd actually play um, the Omega Boost disc in, like, a CD player. Or I'd leave my PlayStation on and just, like, turn the TV off. But I'd keep the stereo on. So I could listen to the soundtrack when I was, like, playing or whatever. Like, with Legos or whatever. Dude, I swear to God, like, th there's some shit, like, in life that, you know, Gen Z and everything, I hate to say it, but I'm a millennial, and, like, there's some shit that, like, they're they're just never gonna get to experience, like, the smile on, on your face of learning how to use, like, a PlayStation as a CD player. It was, like, fucking revolutionary shit back then. So, Oyo, I think it's Yoyo, but I'm like, Oyo... <laughs> Do you like my mnemonics? I like my mnemonics here. They're pretty good. Oyo. Oyo. <laughs> Makes me think of Oikos, which is a brand of yogurt I buy. I like Greek yogurt. It's pretty good shit. Oyo. I gotta keep saying it so I don't forget it. Oyo. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I love this game so much. Can you tell? I really do. I'm just gonna put these back up so I don't forget. Or somehow fuck it up. You see, in my mind, 
I've already forgotten it. I know that sounds like, dude, you were just over there, but it's so true. I genuinely cannot remember it. Uh, Oyo. Okay. Uh, bum bum. I want to say it is just Oyo. <laughs> I know that that's an actual letter in like the Greek alphabet, but I don't care. It's it's Oyo. It's it's probably like some important letter that I actually do know. Yep, that's the password. It's Oyo. It's all Oyo. It's all ogre now. I'm saving the game because I don't want to deal with that shit if I die. These puzzles aren't very hard. This one's a bit iffy um, because it, it involves a weird jump, but it's not the worst thing ever. Again, I will say the anniversary remake of this area is really cool because you get to see it like collapse and like all the shit break and it looks really neat. Uh, did I not? No, I didn't. I need to go down. That's right. I gotta go down, down, down to the bottom of the sea, down with Spongebob and his undersea buddies. I don't know how it goes. It's been 200 years since I've heard that song. But yeah, this is... I mean, there is a similar concept um, to this in Egypt, but not, like, the same. I, Yeah, like, you basically just fucking broke the entire area. I like that. But, uh, I think the anniversary make you shoot something down? I... Ah, oh God, I can't remember. It's been so many years since I played that game. I, like I said, I didn't finish it, but I really did enjoy it. Um, it just had a really cool flow. I don't know how to explain it. I have, like, weird fetishes for shit like this. I just love, like, games with a good flow to them. If they're very fun, like, and a game has a very fun engine, and it feels good to play... Like, I'd honest to God say Tomb Raider 1 is... Oh, fuck, that was way too close. That was a nearly a fucking death there. Well, maybe not a death, I don't think, but I don't want to find out. Uh, I just made a Nakato avocado sound, and, well, I made it. This part's a little iffy because it's actually kind of hard to tell what you can stand on in this situation, but you can stand on this, and I believe you can jump up that. Ah, oh, shit, no, there we go. You see, it's using, like weird physics that you don't normally use in the game so of course it's a little bit iffy for a new player like when i was a kid i was like oh it's fucking impossible and i just didn't look over here now as an adult i'm like jesus how did i not figure this shit out but ugh, jumping sideways in tomb raider is always ugh, it's like playing russian roulette it really is yeah no joke there's like a dude with a gun just sitting there like that entire time you know it's like, it's microcosmic. You just can't really see it. So, you know, but trust me, he's there. He's, he's holding the gun to you every time you do it. So this part is... Uh, I don't think it's the worst. I see that shotgun ammo. I'm not that blind. But that's not what I'm after first. There's a couple of goodies I want to grab over here first. Okay. Plus, I'm not worried about shot shells, if I'm honest. I don't really, like I said, use the shotgun very often. Oh, Jesus. Die. Please die. Okay, good. Alright, bats. Like I said, bats die in one hit, so you can just tap the fire key and then let go, and you'll automatically start shooting the other enemy. There's one more enemy in here. There's an alligator. It's not a problem, but I don't want it to become one, because I don't... Oh, come on, you bastard. I'm delicious and nutritious. Come on. Why don't you want to eat me? You suck. Fucking vegan alligator. Thinking you're better than the other alligators because you just... I don't have words for you, man. Oh, there's two of them. I thought there was just one. Wow. Shows how senile I am. Fucking said you played this game twice, Seth, before you did a record of it. That's true. I did. But I... <laughs> It's been like a month since I've actually finished the second playthrough, so it's a little bit rusty on me. Not like I really consider alligators a very threatening enemy. I actually don't even think I need to heal for the rest of the level if I do this correctly. Come on, you fucking slow-moving son of a bitch. I'll go over there. You see, if I was playing Tomb Raider 2, I could shoot that alligator in the water, but... Oh, man. Dude, out like fucking... No, 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 no. Tomb Raider 2's harpoon gun is iffy and weird, and if you like it, you're iffy and weird, too. This, I... 
I can kind of do this puzzle from memory. This one I don't really like, because you can actually get to this from that top area if you do it correctly. Oh, this is just all about reading the geometry and judging your jumps. Oh, fuck. It's just magnet ammo and a med kit, but I want it. God damn it. Oh, shit. You gotta, like, time your jump just right. This one, like I said, you can get it on the top, but I want to get it now. Because you can actually die if you're not careful doing it. Because I think that's a lethal fall. I, I don't know. I could be wrong. It's because it's there. I just, I want it. I don't need a reason to do it. I just want it. Is that not good enough for you? Okay, cool. Ugh. I, I swear, it's, it's not bad. It's just hard to read. Because yeah, you don't understand until you play this game, man. Like, it's so hard to determine if a, like, obstacle is going to make you fall off of it or not. I can't really say that's a negative thing, though, because... I mean, it's just a product of the time, so I, I can't say it's a bad thing. I'm I'm not even going to fault the game on this. So, let's go ahead and get that shotgun ammo. I'm not sure if that's a secret, either, or if it's flagged as a secret. I can't remember. Honestly, I don't really care about secrets in this game. Tomb Raider 2 does it a little bit differently. I think I've explained this before. Um, in Tomb Raider 2, if you get a secret, you get like a... Yeah, you get a statue. And the statue, if you get all three of them, there's a, what, stone, gold, and then a jade one at each level. And if you get all three of them, you get like goodies, right? Like you get like power weapons and ammo and shit. But I, I don't want that. I want like health and shit. I don't want to have to get like all three of them to get them. I want the, I want the whole experience, man. I want the whole enchilada. Actually, enchiladas sound good. I haven't made them in a while. <gasps> I know what I'm making for dinner tomorrow. Ooh, look what I did there. You guys don't get to have my enchiladas. If you're making enchiladas with flour tortillas, by the way, you're doing it wrong. Fucking no. Corn tortillas, dip them in a little bit of vegetable oil, soften them up like pre-frying them, and then you fucking wrap them up and boom, you're done. You don't need anything else in that shit. I love making homemade enchilada sauce too. It's actually pretty easy. It's kind of like how you make pasole, except you just use like corn flour or something like whatever you want to thicken it up with. Hey, none of that shit. Don't you do it. I know there's one more. That's why I'm getting nervous. I'm like, ah, oh, Jesus. All right, let's pull out the shotgun because I can't remember where he's at. The fucking ass monkey is what he is. Oh, I swear he's going to be right in the spot I don't want him to be. Oh! Oh, God, it's Joe Rogan! Come on. There we go. I like you, Joe Rogan, but not as much as you probably don't like me. I don't know. Those curious, I actually don't watch Joe Rogan. <laughs> I, I find him almost, like, I actually think he has some good points on some things, but for the most part, he starts to waffle, and I can't listen to him for very long. But if you like him, cool. I, I just... I'll make up a tea. He has... He has a lot of really cool people on his show, but I just... I can never get into him. I tried watching him, like, five times, and I just... I can never get into it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not cool enough to understand him, but mm, that's probably that's probably what it is. I don't know. But I have a lot of respect for him as well. I actually used to watch MMA for a while, and I did watch Fear Factor quite a bit when it came out. That's, I think, most people my age at like 27 or whatever right now is recording this. I think that's most people's exposure to him is Fear Factor because, you know, he was the host of that for like, I think, what, like four or five years. So I'd say that or MMA because nowadays kids are like, oh, you know, Joe Rogan podcast. I'm like, do you know who Joe Rogan is? Like, oh, no, he's the guy that does the podcast. They don't know he actually was on TV for a while. My mom just always talked about him like, oh, he did urban meth. <laughs> like... She just kept saying that over and over. I didn't know what the, I still don't know what she means by urban meth. I'm not really 100% sure my mom knew either. She's kind of nuts, so uh, it, it wouldn't surprise me if she just pulled that term out of her ass. But, um, I don't know. I just, well, nowadays he's definitely done a shit ton of drugs. Um, well, I know he always, his, what's well, DMT, right? I, I think that's what he likes to talk about. I, I don't know. I don't know enough about him personally to care if that makes any sense. 
Like, to me, he's just Joe Rogan, and he says funny things and makes monkey noises. I love... If you haven't seen it, I strongly recommend... Look up Joe Rogan Monkey Apocalypse or whatever. It's so fucking funny. It is... I don't... I don't think he was making that up. I think he's genuinely had that concern at one point in his life. And, like, it's it's fucking hilarious. He's like, Samoan babies that can run fast. That's who's going to survive this. I've also seen, like, a video someone did of every time he said it's entirely likely. And then <laughs> they, they did it, like, 200 or something times. And, like, it, it's just fucking so well made. Because it's true. He usually goes, oh, man. It's entirely likely that blah, 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 blah. Or he'll say, oh, Jamie, pull it up on screen. You ever seen the anthill colonizing itself falling over the desert? Oh, fucking brutal. <laughs> I fucking love it. It's, it's great. He's like my favorite train wreck to watch. Him and like, um, oh, what's his name? I don't know. I, I love Chris Chan, if I'm honest. Not like, I don't love him personally. That would be unfortunate. But like... Oh, God, I love, like, just tuning in to the, the occasional Chris Chan controversy of the month. It's just, it's like, I don't know, it's like Maury Povich, but real. And it, it makes it so much more funny. <laughs> like, I just love, I, I know it's terrible, but he's just hilarious to watch. I, I just love, that's why in a lot of my TF2 videos, you'll see me bring up Chris Chan and shit. It's because he's just so funny, like unintentionally and intentionally funny at times like the video of him yelling like at his dad and like i'm working on it like that fucking video is just my favorite thing ever it is so funny like it is an unintentionally just absolutely hilarious fucking gold mine of entertainment i was like oh they can't be that close oh fuck me i guess like if you've never seen chris chan I'm not going to spoil it. Like, you just have to, like, look it up. And the funny thing is, you may be like, what was your first exposure to Chris Chan? And I swear to God, I actually have watched, like, two or three of his videos way, way back in the day. I'm talking, like, very early YouTube. Um, I want to say, like, 2007 or 2008. I remember I was playing RuneScape with a couple of friends and his brother was watching a video and it was like, I think it was the one where he's like, oh, I don't remember which video. I'm sure someone could actually cite what video I'm talking about because his life is so well documented. Um, like, he's doing something. He's in his room and he's he's talking about... Oh, is it the Blue Arms controversy? I can't remember. I think it's the Blue Arms controversy. I can't remember. I've already been in here. I'm stupid. I'm losing my train of thought thinking about Chris Chan and just my brain starts to shut down. Like, um, it might be the Blue Arms thing. I don't know. I know I've definitely seen about the GameSpot, um, or sorry, GameStop. I, I fucking get those two confused all the time. But, um... Yeah, it was the GameStop uh, pepper spray incident. I've actually seen that when it happened, but I didn't know who it was. I just knew. I'm like, oh, shit, I've actually seen this. Um, that was over the Sonic thing. I, oh, Jesus, Sonic fans are just awful. I'm sorry if you are one because I don't know how you get out of bed, but I don't know. I, I've seen that for sure. I know I've seen snippets of the, I'm working on it. Like, I think I've seen, like, that in a compilation video or something. I, I don't know. I've, I've definitely seen like at least three or four Chris Chan videos in their prime, but I was probably like, this guy's fucking stupid. What's he doing? And like, I, I think like most people, I you probably thought it was fake until you realize it's a hundred percent real. And then you get really uncomfortable. Um, I don't know. It's like a train wreck. You just keep watching it and you just keep thinking it's going to stop and it just doesn't. And it just, You, you want to look away. Like, part of you just wants to look away, but part of you doesn't because you're almost fascinated to see if this is real. Is this true? Is is this... Is this possibly fake? Is Am I just a sick, sadistic asshole because I think this is funny? But then you realize, no, it's real. It's very real. Like, it's all very, very real. Uh, like, his... 
Oh, no, I'm not even going to spoil it. Like the Nintendo Power thing where he, like, submitted his virgin with Rage song. Or his poem, sorry. And, um... Oh, man. Like, until you've seen it, you just have no idea what I'm talking about. But, I mean, look up, like, down the rabbit hole. Uh, those are a fantastic... He has a really good one on Dark Side Phil, um, which I have seen in his prime as well. Um... And he also does a very good one on, uh... Oh, there's a monkey up here. Oh, fuck, I forgot to put him on the hand. That's what I did wrong. I was too busy fucking around. This is why I'm like, oh, shit. That was spooky. I could have died. Um, there's a save crystal up here, so I'll take that opportunity to save. But, um... Oh, man. Like, actually, I'm pretty sure this is a real mural. It's called, like, Roman Wrestling. It's, like, a real thing. I didn't just bullshit that out of my ass. I'm pretty sure that's a real, like, thing. Um, it's just copy pasted over here. Kind of like the dolphin, the fresca dolphins or whatever they're called. Um, but yeah, like, I have definitely seen Dark Side Phil in his prime, uh, unintentionally, I should say. I think that was one of the first live streams I've actually watched, or a VOD at least. It was of his, uh, this is how you don't play Metal Gear Solid 2. I mean, I know that wasn't him that, like, posted the video. I, that was, uh like a archivist channel. But yeah, I've, I've seen dark side Phil a handful of times in his prime. Um, I've also seen wings of redemption. Um, I know I've seen at least one or two wings of redemption videos. Um, like, Oh man, stop. Look, l listen, stop. L listen, <laughs> like <laughs> I've seen like a friend of mine. This is not the right way. Is it? Oh, no. Damn it. It's the only thing I hate is I can't remember where the Midas Palace area is. Um, like, the hand, I should say. Like, I've seen that video. Uh, someone linked it to me when it happened. I thought it was the funniest shit ever. I didn't know what it was. I was just like, why is this guy getting so mad? But I have seen at least one of his World of War era um, Call of Duty videos. I know I've actually seen one. Like, that I, I do know. Ah. Uh, Damn it, this isn't where I want to be either. This is my only gripe with this area is it's really easy to forget which areas have what in them because it's so large. But, uh... I, I swear, look up Down the Rabbit Hole. He's a wonderful channel. Um, he does a lot of good research, and his Chris Chan video is actually a good starting place. Uh, Jibby is also pretty good to watch. Uh, Base Shaman, he does a really good job. I'm not sure if he's a Christorian, um, but... I, I definitely like his channel a lot. I'm actually not a huge fan of live stream style channels because I don't like like being part of a crowd of people. I like being like just you and me, baby. Like I really enjoy that a lot. And I feel but he does it really well. I don't know. So do not hit activate on this hand. If you do that, you will die. It's a one hit kill. It's a unique animation. You can look it up on your own time. I'm not doing it. Um, Laura just whips out her big food a cock and smacks it in there. That's how she gets the, uh, bars turned into gold. Actually, lead to gold would probably be about the same weight, if I had to guess. Um, because lead is pretty damn heavy, and so is gold. Also, Laura just picked up, like, possibly irradiated material. I like to point that out, because it's <laughs> lead is like a half-life decay of every 20 years. What the fuck? That was weird. I'd never actually done that little, like, movement issue there. Issue. <sighs> I'm tired. I have an excuse. <laughs> um, oh, Jesus. But yeah, like, Chris Chan's, like... I don't know. Part of me feels really bad. But, th like, I think this is the thing about Chris Chan that's really hard for people that, that think you're being cruel at first. Like, oh, how could you make fun of someone like like this? And then you... You start to peel back the layers of his quote-unquote humanity, and it starts to just, like, turn into sociopathy, and it's really fucking scary. Like, the, like that one where he drew, what was her name? Uh, oh, I can't remember her name. One of, one of his, like, first love quests, and, like, he basically said he was going to sexually violate her if, like, he hadn't drawn him sexually violating her as, like, a sonichu or whatever. And I'm like, holy shit, <laughs> like, 
Oh, that's that shit's nasty. That makes your skin crawl. He said, like, the way he says it, like, I would have done worse or something like that if I hadn't done this. And you're like, oh, my God. Oh, and it, like, starts to, like, break down your barriers of, like, oh, I should feel bad for this person. Then it becomes just, no, there's nothing to feel bad about. It's just insanity, and it's really bad. I'd also like to point out that shouldn't Lara just be able to pick up any fucking object and just put it in Midas' hand and make a key? Did I just ruin this puzzle for you? I hope I did, because it's true. She really should have been able to do that. Also, why do those things only work with gold? That's a little, uh, a little oddly specific right there, but, you know, it's cool. That's the Palace Midas. I'll see you in the next one. Go watch Christian videos. They're great. Bay Shaman's man.